if we do sine x equals minus 1 over 2, okay? This time, I wonder if you can tell me straight off, without reaching for your calculator, what's our basic small angle? It's, it's going to be 30 degrees, right? Because you're thinking sine x equals a half, your first solution is 30. I want sine to be negative. In which quadrants is sine negative? 3 and 4. You see that? 3 and 4. So my solutions will be 180 plus 30 or 360 take away 30. There's my third and fourth quadrant solutions. Right? 2, 10 or 3. So that sounds silly, doesn't it? All right, last one. I'm going to rub off my first one. The reason why I threw this guy in here is because you won't always get these exact value ones that I've been handing you, right? 30, 45, 60 degrees, they're all nice and neat. That 5 over 11 there, that's just kind of a bit so, random, really. So, yes? Can an angle be negative? Ah, can an angle be negative? They absolutely can be negative. We'll get into that in a second. For example, see how this one was 135 or 315, and I said you could go forward and get 495, right? There's nothing stopping us because we're going round and round a circle, right? You can go the other way if you like. What would have been the previous answer before this? Negative. It'll be negative 45 degrees. I'm just taking away 180, right? You can put this into your calculator, 10 of negative 45, and sure enough, you'll get negative one. And the reason why I ignored this solution and this solution is because right at the outset, I asked you, and commonly this is what happens, Please solve in between these angles, from 0 to 360, which are all positive, okay? But there's nothing stopping you. In fact, I've been deliberately avoiding these questions because they're less common and because I don't want to confuse you too much. But sometimes this guy will be different. They might give you something like this, right? Which is deliberately saying, look, I want some of the negative solutions. I want some of the, ne the answers that are over here, like minus 45 or minus 135, and on and on and on. Okay. So yes, angles can be negative, which sounds a bit crazy when you just start from right angle triangles, like so, because how can you have a negative angle in there? But it's not so crazy when you think about the unit circle and going that way or going that way. No reason why you can't go clockwise or anti-clockwise. Okay. So as a bit of a spoiler, though, you don't need to be aware of any of that to have a go at this. Last question, five. If cos x equals 5 over 11, Right? We're definitely going to need our calculators for this. So what acute angle to the nearest degree are you getting? 63. 63? Okay, so x equals 63. So what do I do with 63? Cos is supposed to be positive. So which quadrants am I interested in? Uh, positive, right? So I think it's going to be first and fourth, yeah? Because all of them are positive here. And cos is positive here. If I change it to be cos x equals negative 5 over 11, then I'd be in the other two quadrants. Okay. All right, so therefore, being that I want first and fourth quadrant, I'm going to say it's x is equal to 63. Or, what's my fourth quadrant angle? Uh, fourth quadrant, here. 360, yeah, okay, so it's going to be, sorry, you've given me the answer already, haven't you? It's going to be 297, yeah, there we go. Okay, and again, you can pop either of those into your calculator because we've approximated along the way that 63, I assume, has some decimal places after it. We're not going to get exactly 5 over 11 the way we've got exactly this or exactly this, but it's close enough to a margin of error. All right. Any questions on those before we move on? So, yes? Can you write more than two answers? Okay, so you, you might have noticed, like, frequently I'm getting a pair of answers, a pair of answers, a pair of answers. Um, most commonly, you will. However, and this is where I'm going to appeal to the graph, um, you don't always get um, two solutions. I want you to have a look at this, for example. This is the example I gave you before. So suppose I asked you to solve sine x equals something, some number. Okay. Now, usually you get two solutions, and it's really easy to see why. Right? Every time, see how I draw a horizontal line across, which represents whatever number the thing is equal to. Okay. If I draw a horizontal line here, or here, or here. I'm getting two solutions every time. Do you notice that? Uh, one, two, one, two, one, two. It always seems to be a pair, but there are some alternatives. For instance, I'm going to draw it again because it's starting to get a bit busy, this diagram. There are two places, I wonder if you can guess them, 
there are two places I can draw through where I do not get two solutions. I only get one. Can anyone see them on the diagram? Say that again? One minus one. Yeah, very good. So, if the line I draw through is just high enough that it just touches there, which is one, right? Or just low enough that it only touches there, which is negative one. Lo and behold, I only have one solution, right? Namely, this one or this one, okay? Um, uh, last week, I think, or Tuesday, can't remember, there is one particular point that I can draw a line through and I don't get two or one, I get three solutions. Yeah, Where's right that? In the middle. Yeah, right down the middle. If I go right across there, I hit it once, twice, three times. It's the only spot, by the way, that does that, right? Um, still again, I could get two solutions, that's the most frequent. I could get one solution, there's a couple of spots. I could get three solutions right down the middle. I can draw a whole bunch of places where I get no solutions. Where the green line never intersects with the blue line. In fact, there's an infinite number of them. Like down here maybe. Right? See that guy, he just tracks along and he never intersects with the blue line. In fact, the blue line could go on forever and it's never going to get that low. Or alternatively, it's never going to get that high, right? So do you remember uh, a few lessons back when we said the range of sine is from negative 1 to 1, right? So if you put in negative 2 or negative 3 or 20 or 25, you're never going to get a solution because you're never in that range, okay? Uh, so yes, there can be more. Sometimes there are less. That's why the graph is so useful, right? I said this is kind of handy. It's kind of quick, right? But it doesn't show you what's all going on, right? So that's why it's, it's handy to have it at your sleeve, but this is better.